Thank y'all for coming out. Um, my name's Arn. I work for Ryan Companies, general contractor. I'm safety out, out here. Um, really appreciate you guys coming out, getting the chance to uh, have some training on this bad boy. So if we do decide that uh, a crane operation is what we want to do, we want to use a crane to extricate somebody from an elevated surface. Uh, what we want is we want to run through that crane checklist. Uh, so the first thing companies, ha they really have the hardest problem to solve. And that is where are, where's the person that's hurt and what's the best way to get there, right? And once you get there to start that medical care process. So if, uh, if the first 10 crews, which there's gonna be the closest engine, closest ladder, if they did nothing but find out whether there's a buck hoist, which is what the construction guys call the construction elevator or the man lift on site, uh, that buck hoist will run up not always to the top floor. As they're building the, the, uh, these sites, they'll try to keep it within three or four floors of the top floor, but if you get somebody up on the very top floor, you might be four floors away from that elevator. Does that make sense? So the elevator obviously is plan A, right? But if we have a real hard time to get to that buck hoist, then that's where we start looking at plan B, right? All right, so First crews, make that access, find them, figure out the best way to get there, relay that to incoming companies. Uh, second company on scene, uh, if you could make contact with the job site supervisor or the lift supervisor, start opening the conversation with them about whether the crane's an option, what's going on on site, and just uh, make that connection with the management of the construction site. Everybody good to go with that? All right, cool, so that's a good, a good thing for the uh, second incident commander, i.e. the truck company, to start making that connection and start opening that channel so that when the chief arrives, those things are already started. Good? All right. Once we, uh, we decide that, okay, crane is our solution, we want to use the crane checklist. So the basket that these guys bought, uh, I sent them our crane checklist and it's plastered on the side. And as we get to that basket in a second, we'll go through that. Uh, alternatively, the, uh, the rescue company that shows up should bring their crane litter interface kit. On the back of the crane litter interface card is the checklist. If it's been a while since you've reviewed the crane extrication checklist, I would encourage you to look up the crane extrication policy or there's a video on the AFD Spec Ops YouTube channel that covers the checklist and I'll put a link of it in the description below. The crane will take what may be like a 30-45 one hour operation and make it like a five minute operation okay so it can be really beneficial to use that good all right so just real quick before we move to their basket this is the crane litter interface kit that the rescue companies have so if we end up somewhere that doesn't have the basket we'll pull this out there are cards inside that talk about exactly how all these pieces and parts work uh, but you've got uh, two two ropes two connections both of these are going to attach to the litter. One connection. Two connection. This goes on the crane hook. The other two ropes are for our rescuer. Beat black is for backup, so you put your ASAP on that for your rescue guys. Put your ascending system on the red rope, red for rescuer. Go, go. Good. So you guys checklist, we have a copy on that side you can see. Ooh, sorry. You're good. Keep um, copy on that side, copy on this side, and on the inside I have two copies as well. So you guys are always going to be able to reference that if you're using this bad boy. Uh, this is your tie-off point. Uh, it'll fit any size uh, hooks. You guys have the large pelican hooks. There's also smaller. It'll fit both. So whatever you guys are working with, you'll be just fine with this. Uh, we're tied off to this massive D-ring to the crane. All these cables, everything suspends it. It's nice and level. We do get an inspection once a month whenever our crane is inspected. Um, they check for things like cracking and rusting and um, our cables are there and all the different labels are there and everything's good. Yep. Uh, three people max. There's a 900 pound capacity on this guy. Uh, so that's three people plus, you know, some of your equipment uh, to be able to fly down. This yellow plate on the bottom is our test weight. That has to be, whenever you hook this up to the crane, you got to pick it up first a couple feet and make sure it rides level and that it holds the weight. That's something that we, I want us to make sure is taken care of prior to you guys even getting here. 
So we make the phone call. This is already on the way out and we have it tested. So if you guys need it, you're ready to rock and roll immediately. Um, but yeah, it's real simple. We pull this, we pull these little pins, pull it out and you're good to go from there. Um, the weight is 125% of the capacity of the basket. So if it can hold that, it's definitely gonna hold you guys going up to 900 potentially. Um, yeah, again, this door only opens in. You gotta pull that little pin out, door opens in. That one has two pins on the outside. You have to pick them up and then the ramp lowers down if you guys need to utilize the ramp at all. Um, and yeah, there's the, there's the inside door. Uh, any sort of information for this is gonna be in this little tube. Um, yeah, you got overhead protection. We've got good crane operators and uh, great life-saving crew. So it's a match made in heaven. Basically, we have our own response plan here as well. Uh, generally, once that call for 911 goes out from this job site, this is immediately brought up. We store it downstairs. It's immediately brought up. And like he had said, our safety guy had said, it's gonna be tested before y'all get here. Uh, it'll be ready to go for whoever the first responding officer is to give us the go, no go on the crane. Uh, we will also, part of our response plan is also, we already have superintendents. Their only job is to get your crews from the entrance gate to the site of the, wherever the patient is. So that path will already be figured out. We don't want you guys having to search around randomly for a patient. Uh, the last thing is just making sure that we have that. We will have one, uh, one of our senior leadership down here, either talking to your senior officer or the chief on scene, and they'll be communicating to us up top who will also be with whoever your officer is leading the extrication of the patient. Uh, those are kind of our biggest things is making sure that we're not only supporting you to the best way possible, but we're not getting in your way either. We want to keep everything free and clear. All of our, our hoist operation shuts down once there's an emergency. All hoists will be down to the ground and ready for all of your crews at the drop of a hat. So wherever needs to go anywhere, we're ready for that as well. Uh, our job is during an emergency just to make sure you guys are as efficient as possible. So that's all I got. I appreciate y'all being out here. So let's talk about the use of the basket. So on the surface, you're gonna look at it and you're gonna say, all right, cool. We can put a patient in here, throw a couple guys and get on out of here, right? Uh, and that sounds good on the surface, but uh, the part that we've got to keep in mind is that whoever is in this basket has to have fall protection on, all right? It's a mobile platform. If it were a static platform up top and you've got 42 inch OSHA handrails, good to go. Like you can stand at the edge without having to have a harness and fall protection lanyards. But while you're inside this basket, you have to have fall protection lanyards on. That's what the manufacturer of the basket's asking and that's what the people that bought the basket are asking of us. So anybody inside has got to have fall protection on. So what does that mean for Austin Fire Department? <clears throat> The only people that we train in fall protection and provide fall protection equipment, fitting of the harnesses, training in the lanyards and equipment is the people in Battalion 6. I know you guys at downtown don't like to hear that. I spent seven months in your, sh in your shoes. I know it kind of stinks to have that limitation. I call Dallas, Houston, and San Antonio. They do the things the same way that we do, all right? So uh, I know it stinks, but the, the guys that are gonna be allowed to be in the basket are the guys from Battalion 6. So, if the first in crews can find the patient, start the medical care, let us know if it's a trauma activation or not, how critical the patient is. Uh, the guys that bring the litters and the fall protection, something we learned yesterday and talking through with the construction guys is that the trip from the ground up, we don't want to put people in the basket, all right? That slows the, the delivery of the basket and the equipment down. So. Uh, the mindset of the operator whenever he's hoisting equipment versus hoisting people is two different things so we want to make sure that when we deliver the equipment don't get in the thought that it's faster to put people in the basket to send them up there because it's probably not so for that first trip which is also our trial run we want to only send equipment up okay so put the basket put all the stuff that you want in here send it up all the ground pounders hit the buck hoist Follow the construction guys up to where that, uh, that rescue site is at. Good? Once we get that squared away, we package the person in the litter, <coughs> slide the litter in. So the fall protection for the litter. Y'all scoot into the basket here where you can see what's happening. Fall protection for the litter. 
So uh, the best solution that I've got just uh, pre-canned is to use a grillion. So uh, take one end of the grillion, hook it to the basket, take the other end of the grillion, hook it to the rail, cinch it up. Now we fall protected the basket. Good? All right, uh, got my boys here. Come in there. We got our rescuers. BLS if it's a BLS patient, ALS if it's an ALS patient. They've got their wide lanyards. I kind of gave a really crappy answer yesterday to a couple of guys about why I'm calling them Y lanyards, okay? There's two kinds of lanyards. There's Y lanyards and V lanyards, all right? And uh, it's kind of important to know the difference between the two. Y lanyards have the shock pack between the rescuer and where it splits, okay? V lanyards have shock packs in each leg. All right, really important with Y lanyards is to not have the hook connected to an item and you at the same time because you take the shock pack out of the mix. If you're using a V lanyard, it's important not to connect both hooks at the same place because you have double the uh, shock absorbing capability, which means twice the uh, maximum arrest force. All right, so that's why I'm referring to them as Y lanyards because we chose to buy Y lanyards. But our slang in AFD are lobster claws, right? And lobster claws are lobster claws. Good to go? So for you guys that asked that question yesterday and I gave a crappy answer, that's the better answer for you. Good? All right. The question that came up yesterday also is, can you use your cow's tail as your fall protection? Short answer is yes, yeah, sure, you can, but it's gonna limit your maneuverability in here, right? And our goal for these guys is to be able to provide care to the patient. So the Y lanyards or lobster claws give you more maneuverability inside to be able to care for the patient between the top and the bottom. Good? Following the ground demonstration of the rescue basket, we performed an exercise where we placed a victim higher up in the construction site and use the crane to extricate. Here you can see the construction guys going through the process of doing their test lift. They get the crane connected, they lift the basket in the air, they just also happen to be moving it to an area that's better to access. Uh, but you, if you notice really closely, you can see the yellow test weight hanging on the bottom of the litter. So this is their test lift they want to perform before we get there. One of our checklist items and an item that's an OSHA requirement for a human lift is to perform a trial run. As we do that trial run, a good practice is to use the basket or our Ferno litter to deliver equipment to the upper floor where the rescue site is. So here you see our rescuers loading the basket with equipment and then they will go through the process of coordinating with the upper floors at the rescue site to deliver that equipment in a much more expedient manner. After talking with the construction guys, one of our lessons learned from the first day of, of operations was to not send people as we do our uh, trial run and deliver equipment to the upper floor. One, we haven't performed the trial run, and so we would be doing a live load prior to performing that trial run. And secondly, the crane operator uh, delivers equipment at a much different pace when he knows or he or she knows that it's equipment versus a human life. And so we encourage you not to put people in the litter or in this basket for the trial run as equipment gets delivered to the upper floors. Here you can see the first end captain, the incident commander, and the construction representative all standing in a common place so that they can coordinate the efforts and uh, communicate both to the crane and to the rescue group supervisor who's overseeing the rescue site.
The drawbridge gate on the end of the basket can be used to access a floor from the side and not just lower the basket on top of a building. So on the last day of our exercises, the last exercise, we use that feature of the basket to bring a litter or bring the basket into the side of the building, anchored it to the building, and then transitioned the patient from the floor off the side of the building into the basket. Uh, he's tying off from up there. Bring this back to a munter on the uh, on the call. Alright, tie the munters off. <clears throat> Kyle, Kyle and Haziel, you both need to be very careful of those ropes. Don't go anywhere near with that sozo. down and bring the basket in. <clears throat> bring the basket this way. Jake keep tension in the grillion. Just keep pulling tension in it. There you go. Alright, now continue to slide the grill. Alright. Cody and Foster, let's raise that drawbridge up. Ready? Good. Yeah. Sorry. Let's wait till he says. Cut. Hey y'all. As you can see in the video here, there is a the gray outrigger, as it's called, there just adjacent to the basket that several of us are standing on. Uh, obviously, in a real situation, we could easily hoist off of this outrigger, and uh, there's also an outrigger several floors above us. Uh, those are common on uh, multi-story construction sites. 
uh, but the point of the exercise today was to bring this basket into the side of the building and uh, we just chose to do that next to the outrigger uh, to bring a degree of safety and to allow a few more people to get a better view of what was happening all around the crane basket.